We're sitting outside the Future by Design laboratory right. building, and I'd love to go in and take a look at some of the models and talk about First City. What's that entail? That'd be great. Go I'd love to show them to you. Great, let's go. What would be a suitable place to start? Phase one. Well, you know, in this system, it depends on how much money we get, and that will dictate what we do. So we would like to do a city so we can have enough technicians in there and have enough people in there. We'd like the first city to be a research center to be making the automated systems for the next city. And everything that we make in that city would go back to help people's standard of living go up as well. We, you don't need any patents, you don't need any money, you don't need any advertising, it just goes right back into the system. So uh, we would also share it with the host country. And we would also have a huge media center where we'd be doing books and gaming and magazines and TV shows and just anything we can do to get the word out. You know, they had millions of cowboys and Indian movies. We need many, many movies and all sorts of media on a resource-based economy and on these, this value system to meet people with all different types of values to help them understand this better. So they hear it from us first before they hear it from other people where it's distorted. And also it would be an education center. Yeah, so it's, it's sort of that next phase beyond what you're doing here. Yes. Here yeah. is a home for you and a, a, a proving ground for some of the models and, and buildings and inventions. And of course, this is an education center as well, right? right. Every Saturday you're offering a seminar and tour yes. for people to come and, and see it firsthand and learn what you're doing. We'd like to expand that tremendously. There's so many people who want to come and work with us and stay here, and we can get so much more done. And we'd want to deal with a lot of problems, energy systems, transportation, and we can do that in a larger area within a city. It seems like, just from what I've seen around the internet, social media, there are more and more and more people coming along and um, volunteering or yes, even just are. holding up the sign and saying, I believe in the Venus yeah. Project, I want something like this. Yeah. It seems to be growing, right. and a lot of people, we hear from so many people how it gives them hope and they, they want to work with us. So do you feel so, it would be easy to fill First City? Oh, I think so. <laughs> when, when we put on the internet, we had a, a professional database, and in a very short period of time we had over 6,000 professionals that signed up who wanted to help. So we, we can do that again, and I don't think there would be any trouble. Yeah, wonderful. We're standing by so many of these beautiful models that have been made over the years by Jacques, and you've done a lot of modeling as well. Right. You have that, you have the background in architecture and design, and he, he's he gave coached it to me. you, he, he gave it to me. you. Yes. There you there's, a, there's no yeah, inborn wonderful. talent, anybody can learn, you learn that, this culture cuts you short. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's he's, a process. And there's a science behind art, and when you learn it, you can draw anything. I got the feeling in spending time with Jacques that he, in his heart, he is a teacher. He is a professor. He's here to mentor and guide and yeah. share the wisdom and fast Otherwise, wellspring. Otherwise, he would have been terribly alone, yeah. you know? And that's what he tells other people. It's not going to happen unless people leave the seminars that we have here and talk to other people. And first of all, learn as much as you can about the Venus Project. And we have different courses and more that we're working on. So lots of people, lots of things that they can join with us and work with us at. And so what are you doing for preparing for making that first city happen? I mean, you, you accept donation, you're a nonprofit organization, the Venus Project? Well, it, the Venus Project is incorporated. We have a nonprofit organization okay. called Future by Design, which right. we're working on a TV series, maybe a movie with it, but it's kind of gearing toward a TV series now because we can deal with more subjects and have more time that way. And um, then we just acquired another nonprofit organization where the bylaws are big enough to be able to do a city. And I was amazed that the IRS granted us that and we were really straightforward with what we wanted to do. And it's not just one city we could do in a philanthropic way, but it's many cities we have the ability to do within the nonprofit. And it's called Future by Design. And we are right now just developing the website for that. And then we'll look for grants and funding. I sure love this concept, future by design, because outside of oh, this did type Did I of, call it future by design? Yeah. Right. Oh, no. And the name of that is resource-based economy. Oh, the nonprofit? Yes, the new nonprofit. Oh, okay. 
The other one is featured by design. We have two actually now. So, so the resource-based economy is the nonprofit organization that you're using to build your resources towards that first city. For the city, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Resource-based economy. And because it would be right, right off the bat, you're saying, as you mentioned outside, people would come in and they would live and they wouldn't have money and they wouldn't need to earn money. Right. They would be able to work creatively and work productively yes. but at, their, at the level of their choosing. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah. yeah. Well, we need to bring in people with certain skills who can do th certain things that we feel are needed, especially energy systems, architecture, material sciences automated systems to make the next city go up quicker, faster, and more efficiently. Ways, you know, the things that are real that we need. I feel like before I was even aware necessarily of, of the Venus Project, of, of you and Jacques and the work, that I had this instinctual feeling like, wait, we have unlimited power from the sun and solar yeah. cells are just getting better and better at getting the photovoltaic you know, energy transmission generation. And we have 3D printing technology. We have, I mean, further futuristic ideas like, like Jacques' idea of extru extrusion, et cetera. Right. But even with just 3D printing and solar, That's if right. we have a solar farm powering a 3D printing factory, making 3D printers, now you've got 3D printers powered by solar. I mean, all you need are the materials. And you, why couldn't we just make everything for everyone? Well, it's not just solar. <laughs> we have so many other clean sources of energy, wind, you know, wet wave, photovoltaic, as we mentioned, but there's just so many more that we need to explore. I, I'm no expert in energy at all, but I, I'm a guy who's putting nine kilowatts of solar on the roof of my house, and I've been told that's going to be all the power I need for growing some indoor food, for powering a car with a, a, a power wall battery, uh, and, and giving all the power that we'll need to run a home. These designs, they're, these are pho meant to be photovoltaic, right? right? On the building. Yes. I mean, it, as, an is that... as an integral part of the structure of right. the building, nothing that's just hung on. Yeah. Yes. It, it, that's not enough, though. We, we still need to power in other gen ways, generate power through other means. Yes, and we have so much ability to do that. We just haven't geared it toward a whole city to show how that can be done. The more time you spend, here and with you and Jacques and around the wisdom, the more you want to smack your head. <laughs> we can do this. It's all here. We're, we're so much of what we do is so futile, so counterproductive. It takes such a toll on us and the planet, right. cutting down forests of trees for reams of paper that will never be read because they're, they're only there for business. The problem is that this culture generates is endless. endless. And that's why it's so important to show an alternative direction for for your technology that would enable people to get along, that would enable people to have less stress and not pollute the environment, and work on work on exciting problems that would fulfill people. Most people's jobs are dead end jobs just to feed themselves, which they have to do. But yes, where's the quality of life? That's right. Where's the passion for what you're doing? Yes, and Jacques always says, which I love, that you know, we, we don't even know what it means to be civilized yet in this culture. As long as we have war and mm -hmm. poverty and prisons, we're not civilized. We're stuck fighting to get our needs met. That's right. We're even fighting each other, even we're ourselves. creating enemies and fighting over scarce resources. That's what we go to war for. We won't even go down in the history books because this culture is so crude mm -hmm. when we have the ability to do such wonderful mm -hmm. things. Are these the new dark ages? Yeah, they were still in dark ages. Yeah. So and I liked your point when you were talking about how it's not just the architecture. I don't know if you want to ask anything on that. Yeah, of course. So one thing I constantly reflect on here, being around the work, is that these are beautiful buildings, and they're interesting and futuristic and modern, and they've taken into account efficiency in design and effectiveness. And yet, it's not just about the pretty buildings and, and the designs. It's one man's work. It's, it's almost artistic in a way. It, it, it's been deemed artistic by a, a fine art museum, which is wonderful. Right. I love the way that validates it. Yeah. But, but that's not it. That's not, not at all. people can design buildings. But what, what Jacques has developed, what you've developed with him in the last 40 years, it's so much more than buildings. 
That's right. We always say it's not architecture, it's the social design. It's a resource-based economy and it's the values that go along with it. Jacques' architecture is really innovative and very efficient and very strong and can be mass produced and prefabricated and pulled off of molds. But if you bring the same people into the city, it, you'll have the same problems. So we really have to reorient people, introduce them to this new direction and, and educate them too as they're coming into the city. It's, it's just for me the most important takeaway is the willingness to consider, wait, what if money was really the root of all evil, yeah. as we keep saying. Okay, then if this root of all evil, let's get rid of that evil thing. <laughs> let's try something different. Right. And, and that's what I would want to impress upon everyone is take a moment and just explore in your mind, okay, get over your, you know, suspend your disbelief that this will ever work or that we'll ever be able to get rid of money and just think, okay, and what if we did? Let's eliminate, let's, I, I took a class called The Craft of Comedy about screenwriting and it was that in comedy, the, the trick is you tell one lie. You know, this guy can change into a Superman costume and fly, but then everything else is the truth. The, 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 the actual responses to what, what if that happened? And so let's suspend our disbelief about that one thing. What if we could create a world without money and then make everything else true? What could we do? Oh my God, what could we do? If, if my, tomorrow I woke up and my bank account is zero and Warren Buffett's bank account is zero, we've now leveled the playing field. Right, but it's, it's, it's even more than that, just not money. It's how you organize your resources and how you intelligently manage the resources on a global scale. So that takes a lot of work as well. How you, um, how you design your city so you can serve resources and the main aim of that is so everybody can have a high standard of living. So your, your, your priorities and your aims have to be within the criteria of no money as well. So that's why Jacques designs the way he does. You design one eighth of the city and then you duplicate it. His architecture designs are not just a pretty architecture or um, artistic rendition. It's there to serve the interests of people so everybody's standards could go up so you can house, feed and clothe everybody on earth. If we could, why wouldn't we? Right? That's the question. Yeah. Well, why do we still have wars? Why do we still have bigotry and hatred and prejudice? You know? Do we need to get everyone on board with this? No, that's a great question. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, you'll never be able to change everyone. You right. don't have to change yeah. everyone. You know, most people are, are live on the back of those people who, who give you your energy systems or your dams and your computers and your, your, you know, your lights and things like that, but uh, they don't contribute much to society. And in the future, when you have a lot of people contributing much to society, your, the growth would be exponential. But it doesn't take everyone, it just takes meeting the right people who can initiate this. I've been saying for us, we just need to assemble a quorum of the lovers and dreamers and the believers that we can do better. The, the idealist. And then you hit a tip, the idealist. Yeah. And then you hit a tipping point, and now, boom, it's game on. We're, we're there. Yeah. For, my inspiration here with the Venus Project is that we, there's the first city, and people, you've already got plenty of people willing to go and, and try this. So. And that's the proving ground. And when people see, you mean they're really living? They just give them everything? They got their food in there? Yes. And they go interview them. They're happy. This is working. Then look out. It's going to go viral, spread like wildfire, right? So many people want to do thing that's, things that are worthwhile. You know, even when they get kicked out of their jobs, they volunteer. So, you know, a lot of people realize after working in the system for so long, it's not fulfilling. Mm -hmm. The money doesn't give them happiness or contribute to society does just the opposite. And, and we've talked about technology getting to the point where jobs are going to be very scarce. There's a, yes. a great little video on YouTube called Humans Need Not Apply. I don't know yeah, if you're familiar. I think but, I did see that. And it's great. It's just showing that you, the way we're going, we're eliminating jobs. We're already yes. doing it with automation. It's only going to get That's more. Right. That's right. And so then what do we do when we get to 50% unemployment? Well, that's what Jack's been working on all his life. What do you do with, without money and, and reorganizing society? And people are, like I mentioned, just beginning to realize that there's a problem, but they don't know what to do. They're going through patchwork, things such as universal basic income that won't take care of the problems, especially when we keep our same values and our educational system and our elitism, it won't solve problems. 
So people get it, they, they watch your documentary, The Choice is Ours, say, the one you made just in 2016, and which they can find easily on the internet and watch for free, which is wonderful mm -hmm. that you give that gift. Um, say they're inspired. I want to get involved. What, what do you want them to do? Well, we'd like them to come to our website, read more about it. There's a lot more information there. We'd like them to get Jock's book. We have a YouTube channel that has a lot of information on it. And on the bottom of our website, it says how to volunteer. Check that out. And very shortly, we'll be having a, a wider range of the teams that we work with on the website. Everybody who works with us does so as a volunteer. So it doesn't go as quickly as we want in terms of you know, presenting the information and showing what's available, but um, check that out. Right. And then you have this PC, point of contact, when someone gets right. better trained right. and Thank they're you. equipped to really spread the message as, as you would want it spread, then they become Every, a point of contact. Everybody who works with us goes through some kind of schooling, and the points of contact in different parts of the world go through, I think it's about an eight, a six month course, so a one hour a week, and they become a point of contact. If people are interested in their area, they can get in touch with them and they put on events and answer questions. But we also have a two year course, which is called Social Cyberneering Education Project, which is very comprehensive. And we hope as many people as possible will go through that. And once they take that and they finish that, then they teach other people. What does it take to do to get into that course? It's free. It's it takes free. nothing. That well, it, they do purchase a, a package of, of what we have, and they'll be constantly using that, and that helps support the project as well. But it's a lot of information. And I would say go to our website under uh, how to become um, a volunteer, which is on the bottom of the page, right. and it takes you to a page where we have many of our different teams set up, because there's many different teams, linguistics team, the uh, transcriptions team, we have a social media, we have posters team, we have an editing team, we have a lot of different people working in different areas. So we, we really welcome your help, we need your help, we're not going to get there any other way, and we encourage you to study with us and learn as much as you can, and take the, the socio cyberneering Education Project course, it's be val very valuable to yourself as well. To, to be able to navigate and through the world and look at it in a very different way so it's not as stressful. It's not just about what the Venus Project is in architecture, but it, it really goes into the value system a great deal. Wonderful. Well, I'm interested personally. Oh, I good. came, I saw wonderful. I'm here, <laughs> and I'm, I'm interested. I'd love to support this project as I have been. And, uh, um, monetarily and by doing this. And I Thank love you. the idea of investing in something that's going to eliminate the money to begin with. <laughs> it's like putting yeah, the money into yeah. the elimination of money. That's what I've done. I put all my money into yeah, it. It's a yeah. beautiful thing. It's a I beautiful see, thing. I see nothing else worth working for. I agree. Otherwise, you're working for your personal life, and, and most of the time there's no satisfaction yeah. in that in the end, yeah. or you're really working for the banks. Yeah. Or in this system, you could work up and save hundreds of thousands of dollars, you can get cancer, and you can kiss it all goodbye. There's no security in this system. Or, you know, all the catastrophes you were talking about, the threat hanging over us of um, nuclear armament, I mean, you know, nuclear wars and poisons and, and climate change, you know, that in itself would, should make people move, but it's, it's cumulative and it's, you know, when I first met Jack about 40 years ago, we were working in isolation by ourselves and nobody else was helping and then the internet came along and a few documentaries and the, they went viral intellect went viral because it was the first time this direction was introduced to people and now we have so many people working with us so you know i'm very grateful for that and we're not just doing it alone and that's what it takes <laughs> that's what it takes yeah. not doing it alone wonderful we're happy to be here with you doing it believing in yes. it and taking part participating learning about it supporting it we thank you for all your work oh, and we always love to wrap with a hug wonderful yeah. <laughs>